Hello, everyone. It's Jeremy, host of the Geek Pulse Radio Prime show on Geek Pulse Radio Network. I want to make an apology to everyone. This week, I bought a new webcam, and uh, the webcam defaulted for the microphone through the webcam. So this week's episode, everything you hear from me is recorded through my webcam and not my blue snow snowball microphone. Uh, it, it's my apology, my mistake, uh, and nobody to blame but myself. But the good news is the episode is great, and all of the ladies on the episode sound much better than me, and that's probably a good thing because they all are really awesome and much better than me, so it kind of works out into my advantage, I guess. But yeah, great episode. I just do apologize for the slight dip in audio quality on my end. It will not happen again, and I take full responsibility. So I hope you all enjoy this show. It's great. It's wonderful. And um, have a great day. Talk to you later. Hello, geeks and gamers. Welcome to Geek Pulse Radio Prime. This is our flagship show on the Geek Pulse Radio Network, brought to you by geeksandgamers.com. I am your host, Jeremy Griggs, and each week we will be diving into different topics within geek culture, giving you very blunt, honest viewpoints, some things you might like, some things you might hate, but it's all meant to make you think and create interesting dialogue for our community. Join me, joining me this week are three amazing members from the geeksandgamers.com team. Siobhan Frederick, our lead admin and all-around badass. Siobhan, <laughs> how you doing? Good, how are you? Doing pretty good, doing pretty good. Uh, just uh, interested to see what happens this week on the show. I'm a little nervous. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> and also our director of UK operations and Patreon manager, the amazing Caroline Precious. What's up, Caroline? What's up, guys? It's uh, coming up to 1.30 a.m. in the UK. I'm on my third can of Pepsi, so we're all good to go. <laughs> <laughs> and our anime lately admin and very talented musician, Christina Shorty Swift. What's up, Christina? Hey. hey. <laughs> Doing all right tonight? Oh, yeah. Just tired. <laughs> Long day at work. I heard that. So this week on Geek Pulse Radio Prime, I decided why not bring the lions into the den and let them shred me apart. The <laughs> strong ladies from the Geeks and Gamers community. Unlike most women respecters, I don't do hashtags on Twitter. I bring the badass women onto the show so they can say whatever they want to me. And so I think that's going to be a really interesting, interesting show. But in all reality, I, res I, I love these ladies. I respect them. They do so many things for geeks and gamers, and uh, I'm in awe of all of them. So this week, we're going to jump into what else are we going to talk about but The Last Jedi. So The Last Jedi, it's been heavily debated. It's been all over the geeks and gamers community. It's been all over the Facebook group, all over the Internet, Twitter. You name it, it's been there. And it's a really, really divisive film. Some people love it. Some people hate it. It's just creating so much conversation. So why not capitalize off of that conversation with some of the smart members of our community and team? So this week, we're not necessarily going to talk about our review of the film as much as we're going to talk about how do we feel about Disney, Lucasfilm, and the Star Wars franchise moving forward. So... I guess I want to go ahead and talk to Caroline first because you and I have had a few discussions about it. So just mm -hmm. your quick, like, did you like The Last Jedi? Did you not like it? What were your quick thoughts? And then how do you feel about Star Wars moving forward? Are you excited? Are you optimistic? Are you a little worried? How do you feel? Okay, I didn't like The Last Jedi. And I knew that straight after coming out of the, my first screening of it because it was filled with some very epic moments and then fell very, very flat. And to be honest, I am nervous how Disney are going to handle Star Wars from now on. I know the solo movie, which I have zero interest in right now, and I'm a little nervous. Well, so it's basically, that's a nice way of saying that you're smarter than me because it took me three viewings to figure out I didn't like The Last Jedi. As I didn't say that. Knows, as everyone <laughs> knows. <laughs> now, Christina, you saw the movie with me and the Geeks and Gamers community, mm -hmm. uh, but you weren't in the same theater as me, correct? We, we no, had, yeah, okay. a different theater, a little bit later than you. Okay, yeah, because we had so many people, and I know you were playing 
Uh, I was Star so Wars. jealous. Yeah, you. But you were playing the Star Wars theme <laughs> with your uh, with your group. Uh, what do you? I don't. What do you call it exactly? What would you call your? Yeah, group? the Emerald Coast Honors Orchestra. I'm the okay. one of the instructors at it, and we bring the kids out and train them to do cool nerdy stuff. <laughs> nice, nice. And so, what were your thoughts on the Last Jedi? So that was actually the only time I saw it, but okay. Initially, I was really excited, but the more, the further it went, the whole Rose thing really threw me off. I wasn't very interested, kind of falling asleep, like, oh, I can go to the bathroom here. Okay, bye. Uh, but it, w- I liked it. I'm not going to say I loved it. I liked it, and I'm interested to see how it goes in the future, but hopefully they learn from the few mistakes that, in my opinion, they made. Okay, okay. And Siobhan, you're a Star Trek fan, first and foremost. Yes. <laughs> let's, let's qualify that right now. Go ahead and put that on the table. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what were your thoughts on The Last Jedi, and how do you feel moving forward about the franchise? I, well, I've only seen it once, too, the, the time that I came down. Um, but I really enjoyed it. Um, I actually, from from this moment, I mean, Maybe later if I go see it again or something like that, it'll, I'll change my mind. But as of this moment, I kind of like it better than uh, The Force Awakens. <laughs> Blasphemy. Blasphemy. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> but um, but I think as far as uh, Star Wars within um, the line the, with, that it's in now, um, whatever is comes after The Last Jedi, I I'm looking forward to it. But I mean, something like um, the solo movie. Yeah, I don't know. It's yeah. not. That's a hard one for a lot of people to get excited for, and um, it's interesting. A lot of the talk that's coming out of Disney with the with the Han Solo movie is it's almost like they understand that a lot of people are not excited for this movie. It's obviously still going to do good money comparatively speaking to the normal movie it's but i doubt it's going to touch anything like the last jedi or the force awakens or rogue one Mm -hmm. i mean it might do five six hundred seven hundred million which is really good for any movie not named star wars probably and so it will be interesting to see and that's what i a point i made um on a few of my videos after the last jedi is that the solo film is coming at a really weird time probably the worst time it could come for star wars because Battlefront 2, again, everybody knows I love Battlefront 2. It's, I love it. I play it all the time. But I understand how badly received that game was. And that really kind of started the, the the bad trend that Star Wars is going through. And then we all thought The Last Jedi was going to blow us all away. And again, if you love the movie, that's awesome. And I'm happy that you loved it. There's no right or wrong way. It's just, but I, I, generally speaking, this movie has really not, not captivated the Star Wars community like I think Disney wanted. I think anybody objectively can say that, regardless if you like it or not. And so coming off of those two hiccups, so to speak, not really a great time for the Han Solo film. But the most interesting aspect of it all is what's going to happen with Ryan Johnson? Is he going to stay on for this trilogy that they have basically promised us prior to the last jedi coming out i i I mean you look at the box office for the for the last jedi 1.2 billion right now it's probably going to end up 1.3 the the force awakens the better film by the way siobhan out of the two Uh, (laughs) (laughs) the force awakens uh you know did 2.1 billion i don't think anybody expected the last jedi to match that but that's a pretty big drop so but the, the go ahead Oh, I was going to say, and um, you know that they uh, pulled the Last Jedi out of uh, theaters in China too. Yes, they did. They did, and 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 it did. Uh, which I okay. So the Force Awakens did really well, all things considered. It didn't do great because China's never been a huge market for Star Wars, but the Force Force Awakens did pretty good. Um, Rogue One did really well, but that's because it had Donnie Yen. And so Donnie Yen, you know, he's he's an international megastar, so he's going to pull a lot more over there. But yeah, that I'm pretty sure they were really disappointed with the box office return. And so yeah. I, I know, like, for me, 
as a Star Wars fan, and everybody knows how much I love Star Wars, I, my my enthusiasm has been pretty crushed. I have been going back and listening or watching the Clone Wars a lot. I don't know if any of you have watched the Clone Wars or not. Um, but then I've also got to get into Rebels myself before um, to really get myself back on track. But if you were to give a, a scale, scale of one to 10 for your enthusiasm moving forward post Last Jedi, what would you give it? Scale of one to 10, your enthusiasm for Star Wars in general. Mm, I'd say four. Really? <laughs> and I love Star Wars. Hey, I was, bring, I was bringing you ladies on to disagree, and you're just kind of like all, that's not all on the same page, but I'm used to you guys screaming <laughs> at me behind the scenes at Geeks and Gamers, and here we are on the same page. So. <laughs> it's because it's I'm English. I'm just, uh, <laughs> that's what you get when you bring friends. <laughs> what do you got, Christina? Okay, it's going to sound crazy, but I'm going to say seven. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. And the I start, have hope. And the start, like a new hope? Do you have a new hope? <laughs> <It's> a new <laughs> hope. I just found it. <laughs> <laughs> Siobhan, not Star Trek, Star Wars. One to ten. Well, I mean, you already know how I feel about Star War or Star Trek movies. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I uh, I already I have more hope for this for Star Wars than I do Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's that that would be another episode. To <laughs> yeah. On. You and I have went round and round on that one. So in into darkness alone. <laughs> yes, you and I have had. Even many- though even though Beyond was way better, but no, um. <laughs> I um I'll probably say an, an eight. An eight. I'm, okay. Yes. Well, because you know, like I said, I I really enjoyed the Last Jedi. I thought that um a lot of the stuff that they did was pretty ballsy, and I figured that um after I watched it, it probably was going to upset a lot of fans. And um you know, coming from a person who's not as into Star Wars, and but I've seen all the movies, you know. And um, I knew that it was going to upset a lot of the really hardcore fans. You know, it probably wasn't going to go in a direction they wanted it. And it was refreshing to me. So. Okay. All right. Well, that's, that's, a, that's an interesting way. And I, and I, I, think I a lot can of, agree with that. And, and I think a lot of people share that opinion. And the bigger, like the bigger reason I really wanted to bring you ladies on was because last week on Geek Pulse Radio Prime, there was a point where I and Tommy Frazier, our co-host, my co-host, yeah, co-host last week, we got into how we were very critical of how Disney is moving forward with putting this, it, it, what it seems like a really strong push to incorporate more and more females into Star Wars. Now, obviously, I don't have a problem with females per se. I have a daughter. I have a wife who's 10 times smarter than me and more successful than me. And she tells me how to do everything. I can't make a decision in life without my wife approving it. Um, <laughs> but just in general, of, uh, I thought that the story itself was compromised because of what it's really obvious what they're trying to do. For instance, I, I, I told some of you this before the show. If we want to, you know, highlight women, then let's give 30 more minutes to Captain Phasma. You know, let's let's let Gwendolyn Christie whoop some ass for 30 minutes as Captain Phasma. That's going to be far more beneficial to women moving forward than a terrible plot line with Rose and Canto Bite that derails the movie. So what were your thoughts on how critical I was of this? Did it upset you? I mean, you all know me, so clearly you know me, so it, it wouldn't. But generally speaking, if you were just listening to that, would it bother you? Do you agree? Do you disagree? How do you feel about this female incorporation that Lucasfilm and Disney is obviously trying to push into Star Wars, Caroline. I feel like it's kind of being forced, like you. Um, I, I think I would have loved to have seen more of Captain Phasma with, um, I, I, do you know what, Rose? And, and Jeremy, you said a couple of weeks ago she was the female Jar Jar Binks, yep. which I found absolutely hilarious. But... <laughs> I don't think nothing could be as bad as Jar Jar Binks at the same time. <laughs> hey, he's a re- he's a representative. He's a representative in the Clone Wars. He's already moved don't, into politics. So don't don't stand up for him. <laughs> we can't. all know. 
I you can't, can't do that. I it's, was watching, and not not to interrupt you, I was watching the Clone Wars last week, and I messaged mm-hmm. my, my cousin Tommy, and I was like, dude, just the fact that they're calling Jar Jar representative beings is crazy. <laughs> that sounds so stupid. Yeah, but go <laughs> ahead, go ahead, Caroline. Um, well, I don't like Rose, um, and I think they were trying to force just women in there for the sake of pushing the agenda of having more women in film, which is great, but at least have better developed characters. And they could have done that with Phasma very easily because people really liked her in The Force Awakens. Yes. But they didn't do that. They chose another route with Rose. For me, it didn't work. And she was part of one of the most horrible parts in a movie where they go to like, Freaking alien Vegas, or whatever the hell you want to call it. And I hated that whole thing, did not like any of it. So, for me, if you're going to bring females into it, do it right rather than just trying to push the agenda. And that's what it felt like they did to me. Right. And, and that's my problem with it is, is because I feel like right now, like Kelly Marie Tran, the actress that plays Rose, she is just. She is a breath of fresh air in interview. Mm-hmm. She's a great person. She's so sweet. She's so everything. But that that doesn't change the fact that her character was annoying for the most part. And, and I know some people out there are, are defending, and, and that's totally fine. Um, but it just didn't work in the context of the movie. And I think for the overall point they're trying to make, it's like you don't you don't want to make someone become an internet meme after developing yeah. a character. That's not going to help the point you're trying to make. That's why I say you have Gwendolyn Christie. She can mm-hmm. be just about anybody's ass, including any man's ass on the planet. Mm-hmm. So let's go ahead and develop her. They'll develop her yeah. character a little more. So Christina, what did you think about last week's episode? And what do you think about what seems to be a, an aggressive push by Lucasfilm and Disney? I actually am on the same page. I agree. I mean, I'm a woman, woman power, but <laughs> it it was forced. They're trying so hard. And it's funny because there are other movies where Disney flawlessly does things with race and with, you know, women and everything. And it was really shocking that this is where they decide to drop the ball. They, they've been so impressive in the past. And the fact that they, I mean, to me, it was very obvious. They tried a little too hard. Um, just, and I feel bad, you know, with all the, you know, controversy surrounding the actress. People say, oh, she's awful and bashing her. It's not her fault, you know, yeah. it, that it's she was really given bad. this role written into the film. She's given what she, she has to do it, you know. And I, I love her. I was really glad to see, like, an Asian actress on there. I, I think that's amazing for their culture. It's really underrepresented. But just her role in general was unfortunate. And I hate that. I hate that for her. But... You know, I agree. More Phasma would have been fantastic. I feel like all I got to see was a fight that wasn't quite long enough. And then that glare where we're like, oh, we're going to see more of this person. But it wasn't enough. You know, like I'm, I'm excited that maybe we'll see more of that in the future. That glare was like a foreshadowing for me at the very end. But, you know, I'm like this everything with Rose, especially towards the end, it got taken a little too far. Like the kiss. Where will this lead? I not a direction anybody's excited about. Nope. Uh, so that was really weird. I hated that. Like, I I think with Rose's role, it should have been, I liked when he, Finn was trying to get out of there and he ran into her and saw her crying over the necklace. We obviously know why. And, you know, I think it could have been left there with another, oh, this is a reminder of what happens when you're in the resistance. You know, it just, this is what happens. It's sad. So I think it could have been left there and she should have never been seen again. And that would have been a great, powerful moment there. And who knows what would have happened, but it just, it dragged out too long. They did just so many wrong things with her that I don't understand where she will fit in later because it doesn't seem important. You know, there are other things I'm excited to see unfold, but Rose's development is not one of them. She does not possess some skill that I can see coming in handy later didn't develop too many relationships outside of Finn. So I just don't, I don't really see it going much of anywhere. And they tried so hard, but too hard. Like, mm. And that's the sad thing is, is I do believe in, I, I, Daisy Ridley uh, is a amazing ambassador for Star Wars. Uh, I thought Ray was phenomenal in The Force Awakens. 
Um, and I don't think she was necessarily bad in The Last Jedi. I think she's underdeveloped, though. We didn't see her really be, she was never force trained per se. Like there was a couple of moments with her and Luke, but she's she's really not had any training and she's whooping everybody's ass. And that's kind of detrimental to the overall character. And unfortunately, we're not talking about how amazing Ray is. We're talking about how bad Rose was. And that's problematic. Yeah. And we're not talking about how amazing Ray was. We're talking about how, well, why didn't we get more Phasma? You know, and it leaves a huge void in there. So, all right, Siobhan, let me have it. <laughs> well, you already know that I'm going to disagree. <laughs> yes, I know, I know. This is why you, you have lasted. You, this is why <laughs> yours and my relationship has been so good for so long because you'll just basically <laughs> tell me to go fuck myself anytime. You <laughs> And it's amazing. So. Somebody has to. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, I I do think that Rose was the victim of bad writing. Um, obviously, you know that I don't agree with anything being like forced diversity or anything like that. Um, what I think is that they were trying to establish a relationship with Rose and Finn way too fast. Um. And unfortunately, that just kind of really killed it. And there were some questionable moments. But overall, as far as her character, I, I'm not going to say I loved her or anything like that. Um, she, I remember telling you went outside of the theater. I was like, I could see myself hanging out with her. Yep. She's goofy I'm, as hell. Yep. I would hang out with her. And I was sitting there going, you know, do I really want to, it was like that meme where that guy's like, when you see a thread, but do you really want to start an argument? And when you said that outside of the theater, I'm like, do I really want to start this argument with her right now? Cause we have to go. <laughs> so go ahead. Yeah. It would, it would, it would have lasted a minute. Yeah, for sure. So, <laughs> but go ahead. I didn't mean but I mean, that. like, um, as far as some less screen time, I would, I would have preferred it with her it would have been more quality than quantity um, if they would have just written her parts a little bit better. Um, cause, cause like I said, you know, I, I enjoyed her, her, her character for what it was. Like I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. I, I liked it. Um, but I was really disappointed about Phasma having that bit of time. And then she kind of ended up being thrown away. I mean, I've been excited about Phasma ever since they announced the character. They showed the character. I even have a Phasma sticker on the back of the laptop. I was like, oh, fuck yeah. Yep. She's so badass. She's going to be, you know. And then I'm just like, oh, shit. I just kind of tossed her to the side. Yeah. It's so disappointing. I mean, I remember, and I think I said this last week, but I remember when I, the first time I saw Captain Phasma, and I didn't even know it was a female, and I didn't care. I just saw, like... I think it was Entertainment Weekly showed a picture of her and I was like, holy shit, who is that? And then I found it's out. The chrome. Yeah, yeah. And the then chrome. I found out it was Gwendolyn Christie. I'm like, what? From Game of Thrones? This is going to be a legendary character. And nobody, and this is where, where when the criticisms for Rose, and, and I get there are some just douchebag sexist men out there that don't want women in media. I'm not disputing that. I think it's a small minority. And I don't, but I think there's a lot of people that are critical of Rose or critical of, of how The Last Jedi was and the female side of it. And they're being unfairly called sexist when they're just basically like, no, we like, no, we weren't upset with Phasma. We weren't upset with Ray. You know, we just, this movie took it too far. And yeah, but Phasma, I mean, I've got, I think I said it last time, I got like eight of her figures here. I bought them all up. I'm like, this character is going to be so badass. And even in The Force Awakens, when she was misused and t treated like an idiot, she was like, she basically just quickly gave up to Finn. And it's like, dude, she's Phasma. And yeah. I was like, they're going to read, they're going to redeem it. They came out with the Phasma book. And to your point, Christina, earlier, you're talking about that look she gave. And I haven't read the Phasma book, but uh, I heard someone say, like, there's something with, I guess, her mask that, like, that, that she has been taught and trained to take it so seriously. So when her, I guess when her mask was damaged, that look was to show how, how much it affected her. Of course, you don't know that unless you buy the book, which is kind of the Disney template right now. Like, Oh, Hey, you want to know more Buy the book? It's like, how about <laughs> just tell me in the movie. So I'll know. Cause no movie needs a book or another source of media to make it good. That's a problem. But um, yeah, but, the phasma aspect is really, it is really disappointing. And, 
it's frustrating. It's frustrating to say the least because of the marketing and the potential and who we know is underneath that helmet. And we know she could beat some, some ass. And so, yeah, they weren't marketing Rose. They weren't selling all stuff about her before the movie. And right. it's very misleading about who got more screen time and the quality. It's, and it's very, very frustrating. Um, but I mean, it's, I, I, I'm shocked that Siobhan's really the only one that just, well, Siobhan always disagrees with me. I think she's just inherently going to disagree. Just with what me. I do. So yeah, that's what you do. <laughs> but, at a, but it's interesting that Caroline and Christina are kind of on the same page. I knew Christina was right. Cause we talked shortly after the movie when we saw it and uh but that's an interesting angle so i don't know i don't know what what to what to think moving forward but i do think that it's pretty interesting to um to see the whole dynamic of things jeremy yes ma'am jeremy ma'am let's stop the male testosterone rants about star wars just one minute Oh, Let's, sorry. Let, sorry. I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm just going to take now. over. I'm taking okay. over. The ladies taking over? Ladies are taking over as yes, of right ma'am. now. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Let's talk about some news that got dropped this week, and that's very near and dear to my heart, which is the news that Tom Holland is going to be appearing in the Venom movie. The news got dropped by John Schnepp. According to he sources, Tom Holland was on the set of Venom filming, not as Spider-Man, but as Peter Parker. But he will be in this movie. That news come as to a little shock to me because the deal with Sony and Marvel, and we've said Spider-Man won't be in this movie. And now Tom Holland apparently is appearing in Venom. And I want to get all of your thoughts on that. And uh, ladies first. So, Christina. I'm going to be that person. I'm not huge into that universe, but I, Uh-oh. I know, Uh-oh. I know <laughs> I'm a noob basically when it comes to that. Now, I've seen the new Spider-Man, love it better than some, some previous ones, uh, mm-hmm. but it's exciting news to me. I mean, I, I love the movie. I love Tom Holland. I love following him on social media. He's amazing. Anything with him. I just, I like it right now. He's a great influence. And he's British, which is I know. And uh, he and I love him in this dog. He actually got started playing um, Billy Elliot in the <laughs> West End in London, and he'd done that for years. And now he's Spider Man. Per- per- permission to speak, Caroline. <laughs> yes, Mister Griggs. Okay, I will say though his, his dog. There's a video on social media about him with his dog, and uh, what was he? he was at a press junket or something, and his dog came up, and he was love. It was awesome because like, I'm a dog right? myself, so I haven't seen it. Haven't quite, seen it? Oh, that his dog awesome. is all over his social media. If you I'll, go on his Instagram stories every it. day, yeah, I'll try yes. to find the video I'm talking about and send it to you, Caroline. It's it's really great. Please, so, now, Siobhan, what do you I, think? I'm about- shutting up. I'm shutting up. Yeah, I told you to be quiet. Jeez, Jeremy. <laughs> Siobhan, what do you think about uh, Tom Holland appearing in Venom? I think it's only natural. Mm. You know, they go hand in hand. Um, I'll I'll go ahead and say this, you know, put it out there. But I haven't seen Homecoming. Okay. I'm bu- but I'm I'm behind on so many films. Too busy anyway. running the Geeks and Gamers community. And Kicking everybody's ass in Call of Duty, you know what I do. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, I know that there were some people uh, Aaron, that were trying to find people to see if they could, you know, kick my ass. And so far, everybody's all bark and no bite. So <laughs> <laughs> I had to give him a friendly reminder that I was on an all-female competitive team for four years, so they don't want none of this. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, but, um, I, I can, and and I can say as the as the man that's been put in his place on this show, you don't want to mess with Siobhan on Call of Duty. Just don't do it. So. I already gave him that little snippet of me taking down an entire team <laughs> in one single feed. But no, um, <laughs> but back to uh, to Venom. No, I uh, I do plan on seeing Homecoming. Um, I plan on I think I think I was actually going to get it this weekend. Go ahead and go buy it so I can watch it. But um, yeah, I'm I'm excited as as far as that goes because I mean, like I said, um, Spider Man and Venom go hand in hand. So it's I think it would only be natural 
and um, I'm pretty interested in seeing how Venom fits into all of this too. Yeah, I know um, Venom, the movie, is meant to be based off of two comic books. Now, one of them is the story of how Venom, I believe, moves to San Francisco, and him and Spider-Man come to an agreement that Spider-Man and Venom will leave each other alone as long as Venom doesn't cause any more crimes, attacks, all that kind of stuff, as long as he behaves himself, basically. So he goes off to San Francisco, and then loads of baby symbiotes come off from the Venom symbiote, and he has to fight them. Spider-Man only comes back into it at the end of the comic book to fight these symbiotes. The other comic book it's meant to be based off is a planet of symbiotes come and attack Earth, and Venom has to join forces with Spider-Man to defeat them. I'm not speaking until I'm told I can speak. Speak. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Homecoming. Uh, I, I liked it. It was fine. Um, I know Caroline and I have had our, our disagreements on it. Spider-Man 2 is still the greatest Spider-Man movie of all. Lies. And it's, <laughs> not even cold. it's not even close. Um, but, uh, but Homecoming was good. But regardless of my opinion of Homecoming, Holland is phenomenal. As Peter Parker as Spider Man, he's phenomenal, and so I'm I'm definitely interested to to hear more about this. I didn't even know about this though until you had said it. Yeah, uh, this is shocking to me because of the whole Sony Marvel Studios deal that they yeah. have going on. It's really confusing. Um, you basically need a, a rocket science to, scientist degree to figure this whole thing out. It's so complicated, but. Um, Interesting. Interesting for sure. Now, I know you, uh, did you have any other news or did you want to move into the questions, Caroline? We can move into the questions. I've got okay. them here. I'll let, you, little... I'll, do, I'll let you take the lead. Am I just taking over the show completely? You might as well. It's better led by cool. people in the middle. So. <laughs> okay. So we took some questions from our Patreon members and I'm going to read. <laughs> okay. I've just seen one from Thomas Gilkey and it says, do you think Rose is the female Jar Jar, like Jeremy says? I'm so gonna let every, I'm gonna let her. I'll let you go ahead, Siobhan. Go ahead. <laughs> so I guess no. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that's all I have to say. So hyperbolic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> um, who would win in a fight between Jeremy and Ryan Johnson? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I saw. I saw. Are we talking like this fight? No. I think Aaron. Oh. I think Aaron's answer. <laughs> Aaron's is answer is is pretty much universally the best answer. So you can should re I read it? Read that one. Yeah. So Aaron responded with Ryan would slap him out of his Crocs, and then Jeremy <laughs> would cry while listening to Nickelback. <laughs> <laughs> Two things that are true. I can't like claim that I don't wear Crocs and I can't claim that I don't like at least defend Nickelback against the internet hate machine that has decided it, that uh, and Nickelback's the worst band of all time. So it's butt bad. rock. We got a couple of good songs in there. Come on. It's just butt rock. Stop. <laughs> butt rock. Just stop. Okay, so <laughs> so <laughs> their their first album was pretty okay, you know. And then the second one, they started, that's when they started to like going a little mainstream. And it was like, and then after that, I was just like, yeah, no, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> well, in fairness yeah. to me, now I, I'm only familiar with their first album, the, uh, All the Right Reasons, I believe is what it was called. And, and that had a lot of good songs. The one that blew up, the one that had like hit after hit after hit. That's really the only one I'm familiar with. I never really listened to them after that. So, I mean, that's really all I know them from. The one with Photograph and um oh no that's not their first album oh, that's, that's, not, okay. that's so, way in that's, i think that's like yeah. their third oh well then it shows how much i know about them then so that's the only album i'm familiar with was all the right reasons the pop one the one that went pop so and i liked that one i mean it's fine I'm, they're not they're no green day which is my favorite band but they're okay definitely so. not green day no green, green day, day awesome yeah, green day is awesome yeah <laughs> i'm just trying to get a little credibility back let people know i do have good taste in music <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, so let's quit see. while you're ahead. That's right. That's right. <laughs> okay. So I have a really good question from uh, Cassie Penley Ingram. And uh, she's um, Do y'all have a favorite BBC show or non American show in general? Now, obviously, I'm not American. So I was interested in to what your guys' answers would be. So uh, this is going to be a Netflix specific 
question because that's how I see any BBC shows. Oh yeah. I, I think I'm correct in saying this is a uh, broad church. Yes. Uh, if you have not seen broad church, it will kick your ass. It is one of the hardest emotional shows. Uh, it, it will emotionally destroy you. And I think it's two seasons and the third season just came out on Netflix, if I'm not mistaken. I think there's um, three seasons. I don't watch it personally. But it, it's really- it is emotional as hell. My wife and I watched it. And when we started it, uh, David Tennant's in it. And mm. um, that, that show is it's brutal. It's about a child being lost. Um, and it's just, it's it's so hard to watch. It's brutal. So just prepare if you do decide to watch it. It's a great show, but it's not a show you're going to just be happy afterwards watching. You're going to be like, life is terrible and I don't want to leave the <laughs> house ever. So, <laughs> but that's really, that's a, that's the one that stands out. I know there's the one with uh, Luther with um, what's his name? The guy that's going to be James Bond, the man, the myth, oh. of the, Idris Elba. Oh. Um, yes, it just happened. Yeah, so Luther's good. There's a lot of good BBC series, but those are the two that stand out to me. So, Siobhan. Um, well, it is a uh, British show, but it's not on BBC that I'm at least that I'm aware of. But I like Wentworth. Oh, Wentworth, yeah, the uh, female prison show. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like the <laughs> the English version of Orange Is the New Black. Yep. I'm and it is way, one. it's actually more, like way more brutal. <laughs> I, my wife and I watched the first few episodes of that and it is brutal. So we plan on getting back yeah. into it. Yeah. Cause Orange is, the New, Orange is the New Black is very story driven. It has some brutality in it, and, but with the brutality, it, it kind of tells a story with it. And in Wentworth, they're just all fucking each other up. <laughs> well, Wentworth is kind of like Orange is a New Black is kind of like the Disney version of Wentworth, basically. <laughs> yeah, like it's it's very like I said, it's, yeah, it's just very it's very story driven and makes you very emotionally attached to these characters. Mm-hmm. And so when something bad happens to them, you're just like you know crying in your pillow. Mm-hmm. And then with Wentworth, you're just like, oh shit, yeah. Oh. Your face, your face isn't going to get fixed after that. <laughs> <laughs> Christina, you're just such an anime person. I bet you don't have a good answer. <laughs> you're so right. <laughs> <laughs> I know I you really did. well. I know you. I know yeah. you. I actually ditched Netflix a while back. I'm just trying to cut off cut off so many subscriptions that I had. Yeah. So I really I got it back to watch Stranger Things season two, and that was about it. But I mean. I obviously, with the people that I'm friends with, they say I haven't lived if I haven't seen Sherlock, which I've seen a little Sherlock, but they're killing me telling me to watch Doctor Who, which I played the music, but I'm like, it's not for everybody. I've seen like one episode. I wasn't super interested, but I'm I'm willing to give it another shot, but I really don't have Netflix. I don't watch much BBC, so. That's the first thing I thought when, when I saw, I saw, I looked at you, I said, she's not seen it <laughs> because she watches so much anime. That's oh, wait, wait, wait. It's true. It's Christina, true. you could what? say uh, Ancient Magus Bread. Since Can I? It, since it's based <laughs> in I? England. How about that? Perfect. <laughs> ancient Magus Bread. Let me go get my shirt. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> My personal favorite is uh, Absolutely Fabulous, and I don't know if you guys have ever yes, heard of it. Yes, I love that show. I've never heard of yeah. that one. I forgot yeah. all about it, but I love that show. Holy it's shit. On, it's on yeah. Netflix. It's absolutely hilarious. It came out in the 90s. I think it had like 10, it had a lot, eight seasons maybe. Just yeah. watch it. It's hilarious. And I'd highly recommend Sherlock with Benedict Cumberbatch because it's brilliant. And I always ask this question to people once you've seen the Sherlock movies and you've got Robert Downey Jr. playing Sherlock with his like amazing British accent. And then you've got Benedict Cumberbatch who plays Doctor Strange, <laughs> who also played Sherlock. Who is the better Sherlock? And I have not seen the movies. Um, and I, I, I've seen some of the show, but I haven't seen the movies. So I'm, you're I'm, missing out. I know. I like I the. I like Benedict. Better. Same. I've yeah. seen the movies <laughs> and a little of the series. Seen, I agree. Yeah, the the series. I I like the series better. I've seen at the first season, I think. So, have we got time for a couple of more questions, Jeremy? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It's okay. Not, it's, not, it's not my ship to run. Remember, I'm just. That's here. true. I'm just here. I'm the boss. <laughs> I, um, here, here we go. Aaron Morris, any plans on bringing back Super News or any other shows for YouTube? 
Caroline Precious, that people want more of you. Jeremy? <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, there are definitely some uh, some shows that we're looking at for the YouTube channel. Obviously, I've been really de- dialing in on the YouTube channel lately, um, trying to get us on track. And I definitely don't want the YouTube channel to be centered around me and my screaming and controversial videos at all times i I do want us to establish (laughs) good (laughs) (laughs) i do do want us to establish some some shows on a consistent basis on a week-to-week basis and so yes uh there has been discussions with christina uh about uh, developing something for from uh, like she did in the animately anime lately group and then obviously caroline has been uh, off and on on our youtube channel over the past few years and we're definitely working on getting that back and going so yeah. i've been doing everything i've been writing i've been making videos i've been managing the patreon group i've been going to comic cons doing enough it all. is enough doing it all doing it all. <laughs> it's finally no, you took it, and you finally taken it all over so we're good so. yeah we're, we're great this is your this evil is plan great. your evil plan has worked exactly look at this <laughs> <laughs> you're evil uh, <laughs> We've got one more question from Thomas, which is really a good question. He wants to know what was your inspiration in terms of being geeks? Like, what was the driving point? Was it Star Wars, Star Trek? What? Um. Well, for me, I'll, I'll go first if that's okay. Mm-hmm. I have to ask permission now. Well, I thought um, it was ladies first. But that's fine. <laughs> oh, that's burn, burn! You're enough, lady. You, you I, just go. I. <laughs> <laughs> I asked, I did ask permission though, in fairness to me. Uh, you do bitch a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. This is what the show was for. No, but uh, as a kid, uh, obviously Star Wars was a big part of my childhood. Um, Superman the movie was was really the, one of the things that really I remember most. I remember back in the day, HBO going over to my friend's house because we didn't have enough money to have HBO, but I would go over to my friend's house and we would get ready to watch Superman, the movie. And it was like the most unbelievable thing of all time to watch him fly. And so uh, my first memory of Star Wars is Return of the Jedi. I don't remember the other movies. My parents, when I was being annoying, would just like, hey, watch this movie and shut up, kid. And so it was always Return of the Jedi. And G.I. Joe, G.I. Joe, was uh, my my biggest thing when I was a kid. So those are the things that that really, you know, really pulled me into this culture when I was a a very young age, so. Cool, Christina, you're so eager to answer this question, I know, so. (laughs) Oh, I know, I'm like, it's not, I I know he says, what inspired you? Is that what the question was? Pretty much, what inspired you to be a geek? Like, how did you become a geek? Influenced you? Oh, my answer is pretty easy. I the fir- I was born in Japan, so my parents made friends in Japan. So when we moved back to the states, they would always send us stuff. Well, they would always send us like the newest Pokemon game. So I grew up on Pokemon it from like four or five years old, and I could you know it taught me how to read. I remember specifically playing the game and being like, "Mom, what does that say? What does that say? Abandon a Pokemon's a bit what?" So you know, I Pokemon kind of taught me how to read, and it was kind of cool. Like my sister and I grew up on Pokemon, so we would trade each other like all the starters. Like when the Link Cable came, we both had every starter. <laughs> like we'd start the game over ten times for every starter. But um, it was funny when Ruby and Sapphire came out because Sapphire's my birthstone and Ruby's my sister's. We were like, it's freaking meant to be, okay? Like <laughs> it was like the happiest moment of our lives to get those for our birthdays. But yeah, for me, Pokemon definitely was the first thing I ever saw and then Sailor Moon. And really, I know I'm on the anime page, but after that, after like elementary school, I I didn't watch any anime. I actually made fun of my boyfriend for watching it for a while. So I kind of went on a hiatus and that kind of stuff. I And I got rid of my gaming consoles after Hurricane took them. So for a long time, I was like gameless and just boring. You know, and then after college, actually, is when I really picked it back up. And I'm like, who cares if I'm grown? This is awesome. Like, you know, my childhood kind of came back. Up because it's like I went from a PS2 to a four. I skipped the whole three. And, you know, I'm back into it now. I was playing, you know, Sun, Pokemon Sun and Ultra Moon with my niece the other day. And so, mm-hmm. you know, it's fun to like see it all come back around. And I still feel like a noob in a sense in the gaming world. But anime has taken me by storm for the past like five years and now I just like I said I don't have Netflix anymore I just I, I just watch anime 24 <laughs> <laughs> but yeah uh, Pokemon and little anime got me into being a game. I feel 
but it feels liberating to get back into it, doesn't it? It does. It's amazing. <laughs> and like my my students at school are always like, "You're so cool. You're like a kid." I'm like, "Oh no." <laughs> Siobhan, what? How did you become a geek? What inspired you? Your geekiness, if that's even a word. Uh, well, it is now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Funny enough, my mom. Uh, she got me into Star Trek. She's huge into Star Trek. Me and her will even get into debates, and it could, they could be brutal. <laughs> nice. Um, like they, yeah, they can be hardcore. <laughs> but um, you didn't want to get into the details. You're like, yeah, maybe not. Just, just I am, I am like almost like a mirror image of my mom. I don't know if I could deal with two I'm, of you. It would you. <laughs> I'm not even sure if the world can deal with the both of us at the same time. I don't know how it's still spinning. But um, and also video games. So and those those have always been part of me ever since then. Um, and then I started getting a little into comics when I was younger. Um, probably around second grade. Uh, we would have like. 30 minutes of just like personal reading time and they had comics and that's when I discovered Batman and I don't know if you can see behind me but I got that big Batman I can see it right now here. yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. and all of your fallout uh what is that yeah are those Funkos they're the, bobbleheads so the bobblehead okay okay yeah and then I have like a fallout lunchbox and fallout new vegas cards and I have like mortal Kombat, a whole bunch of stuff and of course, Star Trek and whatnot. But mm-hmm. but those those two, like Star Trek and video games, are what really got me into stuff. I and into like I guess geek culture, I suppose. Um, and I haven't changed since. So <laughs> there's no need to change. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> no, never change. What My coworkers me... think I'm weird as hell. <laughs> everyone, perfect. everyone right. I meet thinks I'm weird as hell. <laughs> sad times no it's good times what we're maybe, all weird <laughs> we are all weird we're geeks and gamers. i think you have to be to get into the group to some degree anyway what made me into a geek um a wrestling i guess um my sister i have an older sibling and she used to put me on her lap when i was like two or three and she'd be like god that's Shawn michaels that's the undertaker and she would tell me who all these wrestlers are I still love wrestling today so I guess if you call it a sport that's my sport that I'm into sports it entertainment is a sport. it's a sport you class it as a sport right and yeah. um growing up the Spider-Man and a cartoon series that came out in like the 90s the X-Men one as well comic book stores I don't know if any of you guys know this but comic book stores aren't really big in the UK or they weren't really big in the UK so I didn't grow up with any comic book stores near me but if I did I would damn well have gone there and started buying comics but I collect graphic novels now I mean if you look around my place which you can see some things but it's just so geeky and I denied I don't know about you guys but I denied it for a long time that I was a geek and then it just just like yeah I'm a geek I'm just gonna roll with it yeah, I, I denied it for a long time too. Mm. A, a lot of I think uh, you stopped denying it when you realize the cool people you meet that yeah. they're kind of cooler people than the people you already know and are trying to like impress. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was always big into sports, uh, you know, in my teen years, and uh, but I, I, that's kind of why I decided to go ahead and I feel like there's and I know you guys probably aren't into sports much, but I mean, like, I feel like sports and geek culture are kind of kind of intertwining a little bit you know Mm -hmm. especially with wrestling yeah yeah i mean and i said this um the other day but five years ago when i started geeksandgamers.com wrestling was not covered on espn it was covered on ign and now wwe has a full-fledged section on espn and it, and then you have uh you have esports that are covered on espn now so they're starting to cover video games and I just feel that those two worlds, I'm not saying we're close yet, but they are starting to, uh, you know, intertwine a little bit. You see a lot of movie fans debating over statistics now and Rotten Tomato scores and box office and performance and all that. And that is straight from sports people. 
because that's what sports people do is debate stats and data. And you see a lot of that with movie fans now. Oh, this movie made that and this movie made that, but it had a score here and a score there. And so, you know, that sports is part of it too. So uh, I don't know if I ever denied it. I, I did go through ebbs and flows of like sports being my number one and then back to, you know, being into comic books and video games. And so, yeah, but that was a good question. That was a, I was a little like you, like I, when I didn't have my nerd phase, like that part in life where I had no game consoles, no access to anything nerdy, really. I actually was an athlete, like in high school, I was voted most athletic, which was weird to a lot of people, especially now when they see how nerdy I am, they're like, is that really you like doing this? And I'm like, yeah, that was me. (laughs) But I actually just recently, like I haven't done anything since high school. Like, you know, so from being the county number one weightlifter to being like, shrimpy me uh but i actually started going back to the gym up the road and the first day i walked in i looked to the left and there's a table that said sign up for saiyan training here like super saiyan like Mm -hmm. dragon ball z i'm like dude that's cool like (laughs) and it's weird to see that in a gym and then i was on the treadmill the other day and there was a guy across from me and i really should have said something i wish i had my geeks and gamers like uh business cards with me because he was watching dragon ball z while he was on his bike and i'm like yes nice it was cool (laughs) You know, That's awesome. Nerds do care about their bodies. We're not lazy. <laughs> <laughs> when we're not watching series, promise right. we have a life. <laughs> right. It's cool to see the worlds intertwine for sure. So, was that all the uh, questions, Caroline? Yeah, I, uh, ladies, I think we made a real statement today taking over <laughs> Geek Cross Radio Prime from Jeremy. But um, I'm going to hand back the reins back to him because I'm not a bitch. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have it any other way. It'd be nice. It'd be nice at times. <laughs> I wouldn't have it. Feeling like generous. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't have it any other way. I uh, I've had a, I've had a blast tonight uh, with you ladies on the show, and uh, you know you all mean a lot to me, and uh, I appreciate your belief in in me and geeks and gamers, and and bringing your time and talent and energy to this team, and uh, representing geeks and gamers how you do. You know, it's uh it's amazing to me that Caroline is you know all the way over in the UK and. Sometimes it's sometimes it's tough for her. She's all the way over there and there's nobody else over there. And, and we're all based over here. Just uh, last week, she was trying to cover an event, you know, for us and uh, everything didn't work out. It would have been much easier for her if she would have had maybe local support. That's, that makes it a lot easier because you had to go what you were planning on going 30, 40 minutes into London. Yeah, we it was um, central London. I'm probably about 45 minutes um, out from London on a train and we was going to go to London and get before we got footage of what we were actually going to record we were going to go around London and we we're going to record London Bridge and Big Ben mm-hmm. and all that kind of cool stuff but I'm confident that we'll get the opportunity to do it again. Yeah yeah definitely and so you know it just means a lot to me that that, that she continues to do what she does for us and Christina, you know, I met you, you know, in the past year and uh, Bryson, I believe, brought you into the community. And, uh, you know, I remember when I was uh, curious about like, man, do I do I want to like I need to reach out to her. She's local. I don't know a lot about you. I call Bryce and he's like, oh, I've known her since high school or, or school or whatever. He's like, she's yeah. awesome. He even mentioned you were an athlete or whatever. He's yeah, like, we she's knew determined. each other through sports. That's how we met. <laughs> and he mentioned that. And he's like, she's determined when she puts her mind to something. She's 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 going to do it. And I was like, oh, OK, cool. You know, I just needed to have some verification of who she was or whatever. And then uh, and then, you know, all the stuff you say to me about you know, what can I do to help grow geeks and gamers and, and all this stuff. And so it's really awesome. And then Siobhan putting up with all of her friends who hate my guts. And yet she stuck by my side all these years. Uh, it's really cool. And, uh, you know, I, I, how did you, like, you've been in the community for a long time. How, how did you just come in through some wave or something of people adding or how did, how um, did you the group? I, it ended up being suggested to me because a bunch of my friends are in it. Um, okay. And so I just hopped on in and there was only like a couple hundred people at the time, you mm-hmm. know, and yeah, uh, we're up to 17,000. Wow. So. Yep. Well, that was the early days. And then I, so I was like, man, I, I remember at one point when I was reaching out, I was like, I, I know her. I don't know her, know her, but I know of her and I know all of her friends hate my guts and she's still here. So she must like it. So I need to see if she can help out being an admin and, <laughs> here you, are, you know, been here. You ever know, since, so 
you know, the funny thing is, is that um, this was before a bunch of them had left too. Was um, it? Okay. Yeah. I think, I think what it was, was that you are, that me and somebody were getting into an argument because they were making some stupid ass comment and I just went in on them. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I guess, I think after that, you're just like, yeah, she can hold her own. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And then, so. and then I made friends with Mauricio and, uh, yeah, a few a few others and stuff, and I guess I just kind of wiggled my way in. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so uh, so that's going to do it for this week's episode of Geek Pulse Radio Prime. Uh, before we leave, uh, I want to give each of you ladies an opportunity. If you have any shout outs or if there's any closing thoughts you want to add, I'll let you go. So Caroline, take it away. Uh, yeah, so I want to give a shout to our Patreon members, Thomas Gilkey and... Uh, Christina is going to finish up the last name for me, but Miguel. Para. Yeah, there's no point in me trying to roll my tongue to get spit all over the camera. (laughs) No no more months. So shout out to those two guys. And uh, you guys can find me at Kaz the Geek on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. All right, Christina. Yeah, I actually really just want to shout out to Thomas Gilkey because I got to meet him. I can, still can't believe that he came all the way down here to hang out with us for the Star Wars premiere. And he was so cool. And like I went <laughs> went out to eat with you guys because I had like a fever. I was sick right when all that happened. But I didn't it was so much fun. Yeah, I had a fever that night. I was feeling horrible. I got the flu that day. And like, oh, wow. Yeah. So while we were at dinner, if I was quiet, that's why. <laughs> no, you, <laughs> but you were, it was you, you really, I had it, to you meet. covered it well. You covered it well. <laughs> yeah. He came all the way down here to meet us. I was like, I'm not going to miss this chance to like hang out with y'all. Cause y'all saw the movie before I did. So I was like, man, I got to hang out with you guys and talk about this. But it was really cool to see him. And I'm like trying to get him back down here so we can show him the beach when it's yeah. like good weather. He's planning. So on really to, cool. He's planning on coming down for um, Infinity War. We're going to try to do another meetup for Infinity War. So he'll that's be back. So. Awesome. I think it's, I, that's what I hope for more for geeks and gamers is that people feel like they can come down here and hang out with us. And me and Miguel have even talked about going up to see uh, people from the Anime Lately community in New York because we yes. really want to go to New York anyway. And now we know people. It's just... It's weird how much like these people have become family. It's pretty awesome. That's awesome. Siobhan Frederick. Um, I'll probably go along with it and, you know, give a special shout out to Thomas too. Cause he's been, he's, I haven't it, with, okay. So with me being in the community for so long, we've had, we have a lot of people who are, really dedicated to geeks and gamers you know they're really about how we handle things and how we run things and whatnot and thomas has gone above and beyond um you know just just doing so much for us and i like i said or like everybody else has said you know i was it was just really cool that he came down to pensacola to to hang out just to just to go see star wars you know Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I did get to go down there and I got to hang out with him for a while. Um, and he's a really cool guy, you know, so, um, and then, you know, of course I would like to shout out just like all the people who support us through Patreon period, like everybody. Cause, um, you know, regardless of whatever, it's being donated. It doesn't, that doesn't matter. It's just the fact that they're willing to go out of their way to, to support us and support what we're doing. And, uh, yeah. And it's, uh, it's absolutely appreciated. So. All right. Yeah. And and you couldn't, I'm going to have to piggyback off everything you guys said, Thomas, uh, Thomas has just been so incredible and, uh, he loves this community so much. And, uh, he's, he's the, uh, the, he's the standard for the geeks and gamers supporter and uh, he's just a a breath of fresh air. Anybody who, who meets him, hangs out with him, you'll know it. He's uh, he's got an infectious personality and uh, we are all humbled to have uh, him in our community. So, and I do want to shout out just the entire geeks and gamers team. You guys are all amazing. 
um, humbled every day by your support, uh, your belief, and everything that we continue to accomplish. Um, as the owner and the leader of Geeks and Gamers, I've never felt more momentum in this community and this, this brand than right now, and I'm really excited to see where it goes. So uh, I can't wait for all of you to take that journey with us. So for Siobhan, for Christina, for Caroline, my name is Jeremy. Thank you guys very much for checking out this episode of Geek Pulse Radio Prime. We will see you next week. Have a great day. Thank you.